thanks everyone for, for coming and for the organizers for inviting me. Um, so what I'd like to talk about is the integration of uh, genomics, bioinformatics, and dynamical modeling to create large-scale dynamical models of individual cells, or what we call whole cell models. So uh, just a quick outline, uh, we'll give an introduction to what whole cell models are, talk about the state of the art of whole cell modeling, uh, then talk about the limitations that exist to developing large-scale models of individual cells, uh, and then some work that we're doing to systemize and accelerate the construction of whole cell models to make larger and more accurate models possible. Uh, and then lastly, I'll conclude with some thoughts about the integration of genomics and bioinformatics and um, how that relates to whole cell modeling. So we're interested in whole cell modeling at Mount Sinai for a couple of reasons. The main reason is that we'd like to be able to deliver to patients uh, uh, precise and, and patient-specific diagnoses and prognoses, or di diagnoses and uh, uh, treatments. And so in order to do that, what we need to be able to do is interpret the large number of mutations that a patient might have uh, and any combination of mutations that a patient might have. And so to do that, we need large-scale models which represent everything inside a cell, every gene or every pathway that could be affected by a mutation, and how those mutations affect the individual's physiology, the response to drugs, et cetera. So what we're envisioning in the future is that if you come into a clinic, then a clinician would collect a large amount of genomic data uh, about your uh, about yourself, and then we use that to construct personalized whole cell models, and then use those personalized models to uh, to design prognoses that are specific to individual patients or therapies that are optimized for that particular patient. Uh, and similarly, we'd like to be able to use detailed computational models that represent everything inside a cell to rationally engineer microorganisms. That could be used for a variety of applications, such as producing drugs or biofuels or commodity chemicals. So what is a whole cell model? Uh, whole cell models are, are models that represent single cells. They represent every individual gene function inside a cell. They try to represent every molecular species, and they try to do this over the entire cell cycle. Now, because we're interested in potentially extrapolating or pr predicting the effects of mutations in any arbitrary patient, including the, the effects of any arbitrary combination of mutations in any patient, which we'll never be able to see uh, ahead of time, we need to build models that are mechanistic, that employ universal physical principles so that we can extrapolate beyond the limited range of training data that we might have. So that leads us to develop models which are dynamic and stochastic. And the last couple of things about whole cell models is that we always try to build species-specific models. That ensures that when we build models and we use models to uh, generate new pi hypotheses, that we can go into real biological systems and evaluate those hypotheses with real experiments. So people have been interested in whole cell models for a long time, and there's been, I think, two major challenges which have limited progress in whole cell models until recently. The first is we have incomplete knowledge about biology. We, we still don't have complete part lists, or, although we're making a lot of progress. We don't know how all of the parts interact with each other, uh, and we certainly don't have kinetic data describing every aspect of cellular systems. Uh, and the second major limitation, I think, that's prevented progress for a long time is that we've had few tools for building very large-scale models. So over the last few years, I think there's been progress uh, in each of these areas, which has allowed us to build wholesome models for the first time. The first is that we, we now have a large number of genomic technologies that we can use to characterize cells in high dimensions. They're not perfect. There's still a lot of things that we can't measure, but we can at least now get information from, for example, from RNA-seq experiments on uh, RNA expression levels. If we do time courses, we can get information about RNA tr or about transcription rates and degradation rates. Uh, I think this, the second major advance, which is enabling progress in wholesome modeling, is bioinformatics, the ability to take large, high-dimensional genomic data sets, infer networks from them, and then if we layer on top of that uh, kinetic data, we can begin to, to build dynamical models of individual pathways. And the last major advance, which I think is enabling wholesome modeling, is 
new technologies for combining multiple networks or, or multiple dynamical models of multiple individual pathways and merging them together into a single model. So we've used this combination of approaches, combining genomics, bioinformatics, and dynamical modeling to develop one of the first wholesale models of Mycoplasma genitalium. It's a small gram-positive bacterium that contains just 525 genes. Now, we built the model by combining models of 28 pathways. They, ra they range from core pathways like metabolism and uh, transcription to translation, as well as less central pathways like DNA damage, DNA repair, uh, RNA modification. So I think the really cool thing about wholesome models is that you can use them to make a wide range of predictions about the physiology of individual cells. So the, this animation illustrates the predicted life cycle of one silico mycoplasma genitalium cell. The, little, the blue curve in the, the top left graph here illustrates the growth, the growth dynamics of the cell as it uh, grows, elongates, and divides. The other curves illustrate the growth dynamics of a few additional cells to illustrate the, the population level variance that's predicted by the model. The top right here illustrates the predicted size and shape of the cell as it grows, elongates, and divides. The middle left, uh, sorry, the uh, laser pointer is not perfect. Uh, the middle left panel illustrates the predicted metabolism. The middle right panel illustrates the, the size of a protein complex that forms at the origin to separate the strands of the chromosome to initiate replication. At the bottom here, we've, we've indicated where proteins are bound to the chromosome throughout the cell cycle. And then finally, at the bottom right, I've indicated the expression levels of protein monomers throughout the cell cycle. So I just want to break that down in a couple slides. Um, so the, the first thing that you can use wholesome models to do is to predict fine-grained behaviors, uh, or predict a, a wide range of fine-grained behaviors. Um, this slide illustrates the predicted binding locations of DNA A in red, DNA polymerase in green, and RNA polymerase in blue throughout the predicted life cycle of one in silico cell. And with, with wholesome models, we can even dig even further if we zoom in on just a small piece of the space-time graph. What we see on the right side is that we can even use wholesale models to predict really fine-grained behaviors like interactions or collisions among pairs of DNA binding proteins. Uh, perhaps more interestingly, we can use wholesome models to predict a variety of systems level behaviors. This slide indicates the ATP in blue and the GTP in green usage of the most highest energy consuming processes throughout the in silico life cycle of one cell. So we've analyzed this information to get in, some insights into how cells are allocating energy across pathways over time and throughout the cell cycle. So as I said at the beginning, we're interested in using wholesome models to guide bioengineering, guide bio and guide medicine. So we, we have a couple of projects that we've been exploring to, to begin to explore those issues. Uh, this slide illustrates a collaboration that we have with Luis Serrano and Maria Luch Center at the Center for Regulatory Genomics to build a wholesome model of mycoplasma pneumonia and then to use that model to design a faster growing strain which we could then use as a chassis for future bioengineering projects. Uh, in a recent uh, collaboration with Darius Plesniewski at the University of Warsaw, we've illustrated how you could combine wholesome modeling with bioinformatics and with structural modeling to reposition drugs from distantly related species to mycoplasmas. So, Again, as I said at the, at the beginning, we're really interested in using wholesome models to drive bioengineering in medicine. And so we have two projects in the lab that are ongoing now to explore that. One is this project that I mentioned to build a wholesome model of mycoplasma and pneumonia, which is a closely related species to genitalium, but has a considerably more experimental data. And then to use that model to design a faster growing, more predictable strain, which could be a chassis for future engineering. And the second is a project to develop or to, to pilot the first wholesome models of human cells using human embryonic stem cells. Now, to, to build wholesome models that can really drive bioengineering in medicine, what we need are models which are much larger and much more accurate than the wholesome model that we have today of mycoplasma genitalium. 
And so what, in order to do that, we need to systemize and formalize and accelerate all the aspects of pulse and modeling that we've been developing in, in ad hoc ways over the last several years. So we need to build models that are, methods that are more rigorous. We need to accelerate uh, wholesome modeling so that we can develop more accurate and larger models in a short amount of time. And we need to be able to describe models in ways that make them easier to understand for other people so that in the future, larger numbers of people can contribute to wholesome models so that we can harness more expertise across the community. So um, what we're doing is going back at our process for building wholesome models, which is starting from genomic and biochemical data, organizing that data, building pathway submodels from that data, and merging that data into uh, a unified model, and reinventing every aspect of this process to formalize it and to accelerate it. So I'll just tell you about a couple of the things that we're developing to systemize this process. Uh, the first thing that we're developing is new tools for aggregating the very large amount of data that one needs to build wholesome models. So in the interest of time, I'll, I'll uh, focus more on a couple of the other technologies that we're, we're developing. Uh, the second thing that we're developing is a higher level rule-based language for describing wholesome models. And this language, I think, will have a very central role in connecting genomics and bioinformatics with systems biology. So from a genomics, biochem or, uh, genomics or bioinformatics perspective, what the language would be able to allow you to do is do something like describe an, a reaction where a protein binds a location in DNA rather than as a specific location or as an enumerated list of all the locations where that protein could bind DNA, but instead define that as a sequence motif and then have the simulation engine dynamically compute the matches and determine uh, dynamically where that protein binds DNA. So this, what this allows you to do is define models in a way which is much more analogous to the concepts that bioinformaticians or genomic researchers are using to describe DNA protein interactions rather than the sort of low level description that dynamical models or dynamical modelers have been using to describe these kinds of reactions. The other thing that this will allow you to do is describe pathways in a much more modular way so that they can much more easily be combined together to develop large models. Now, as we build larger and larger models, we're going to need higher performance simulation methods to simulate those models in a reasonable time, uh, particularly if we need to do parameter estimation or you want to do parameter scanning or anything that's going to involve running large numbers of simulations across large numbers of parameters. So we have a collaboration with uh, Peter Barnes at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory to develop a high performance simulator for wholesome models. And it will use a technology called parallel discrete event simulation, which is a technology that's been developed in the computer science literature over the past 45 years. And people have even used it to run simulations up to 2 million cores. Uh, but it's not a technology that has been used very much. Um, but be because it's, it has been used to, to run very large scale simulations on up to millions of cores, we think that this will allow us to simulate wholesome models in a reasonably efficient and, and quick way. Okay, so lastly, I wanted to talk about the interaction between uh, wholesome modeling and genomics and bioinformatics. So I think the most obvious ways in which genomics and bioinformatics feed into wholesome models is that we're using genomic data to constrain wholesome models. So for example, we're using RNA-seq data to constrain parameters that relate to transcription rates and RNA degradation rates. Uh, and second, we're using networks to seed submodels of individual pathways. Uh, particularly, we're using transcriptional regulatory networks that are inferred from RNA-seq experiments to infer transcriptional or, or dynamical models of transcriptional regulation. Uh, we're also using inferred protein complex networks to infer uh, m models of protein complex formation. Another maybe slightly less obvious way in which we're using bioinformatics is that we're using prediction tools wherever possible to predict properties of proteins or RNA. So we're using things like PSORT to predict protein localizations. We're using uh, rules of thumb like the NN rule to predict protein half-lives. 
Uh, we actually prefer to use prediction tools rather than raw data because it ensures that we can get a complete data set of, of, of parameters, whereas if we rely on experimental data, then we may have to impute missing values. Another way that we're using bioinformatics in, in wholesome modeling is that we're, we're trying to adopt several methods that have been developed throughout the bioinformatics field for a variety of other problems. One thing that we're, we're trying to do is take workflow technology that's been developed in tools like Taverna and use that as a way of reproducibly building models in systems biology. So this will, among other things, allow you to trace systems biology dynamical models all the way back to experimental data, which currently is quite difficult to do in dynamical modeling. Uh, we're also using pathway genome databases as a tool for organizing the data to train wholesome models, which is also wasn't their original purpose, but turns out to be extremely useful for this. Uh, another way that we're using methods from bioinformatics is using the same kind of big, big data methods, but which have been developed to uh, explore or understand genomic data sets, but instead use them to understand dynamic or understand simulation results that are generated from wholesome model simulations. So lastly, I think there's a, a few ways that um, well, wholesome modeling depends on genomics and bioinformatics, but there's a few areas in, of genomics and bioinformatics which I think have been, from our perspective as as wholesome modelers continuing, uh, considering entire cells, um, uh, there's a few aspects of, of cell biology which we think that ha have been understudied by genomics and bioinformatics, much like the rest of the cell biology community. And a few include the fact that we have large-scale experimental technologies to, to, to study the transcriptome and the proteome, but we don't have great methods, particularly for collecting cell scale kinetic information. We have databases like Brenda, but it's extremely difficult to assemble a consistent set of kinetic data on, on rate parameters. So what we'd really love to see for wholesome modeling, or what we need to see to, to push wholesome modeling further, ultimately will be additional genomic scale data sets on other aspects of physiology which have been relatively undercharacterized. Similarly, we're going to need networks which cover not only the best studied pathways like transcription and transcriptional regulation, but other pathways like RNA modification, DNA repair. We're going to need networks for every pathway inside a cell. Okay, and so finally, I wanted to share some thoughts about what wholesome modeling can offer genomics and bioinformatics. I think the, the main thing that, that wholesome modeling can offer is the ability to integrate heterogeneous data sets and networks into a single model, and then through that, allow you to potentially reanalyze data sets in the context of other pathways. Of course, it's possible to do this with st statistical methods as well, but this potentially offers you another perspective particularly one from a dynamical perspective and one which is really keenly focused on, uh, in, on interactions among pathways. Uh, an another way I think that, that uh, wholesome modeling can be useful to uh, people directly outside the wholesome modeling community is that in order to build wholesome models, we have to build these very large integrated data sets and other people may be interested in reanalyzing those pathway genome databases or, or data sets for other purposes using other methods. Okay, so where is wholesome modeling going over the next several years? Um, over the next few years, we're going to, we think that the wholesome modeling field is mostly going to focus on formalizing and systemizing our approaches to wholesome modeling and then using that to pilot a few uh, models of human and bacterial cells. Going forward, what we'd like to do is, is then build a collaborative wholesome modeling platform which allows ultimately anybody in the world to contribute to a, a few key wholesome models of bacteria and human cells. And we think that we need to do that because we're going to need to be able to harness a large amount of expertise and experimental data on every pathway that exists in a cell. And there's no way that my lab or my lab and just a small number of collaborators are going to be able to do that. Um, 
So once we've developed this platform, we want to pilot it with a few small consortia and then eventually open it up to the entire scientific community. Okay, so lastly, I just want to summarize. Uh, we think that wholesome models have a, a great potential to guide bioengineering and medicine, but there's clearly a lot of work that needs to be done to build much larger and much more accurate models. And so in particular, that means that we, we need to come, overcome the methodological limitations to wholesome models and develop a variety of tools for systemizing and accelerating all the aspects of building and simulating wholesome models. And so we're, we're building those tools and then piloting them in our lab in conjunction with models of mycoplasma pneumonia and human embryonic stem cells. So I just want to thank everyone in my lab, uh, Yin Hun Chu, Arthur Goldberg, Graham Gossel, and Yosef Roth, and our collaborators. And also advertise, we do have a few positions available. If you're interested in wholesome modeling, uh, please check out our website or contact me. We're in, in New York, we're across the street from Central Park. It's a great place to work. And New York is a very vibrant city to live in. So thank you very much.